Okay, hello, Andy Sandham here. So, uh, we're going to have a quick look at using some of the myriad of tools that are now available to the game developer for quick prototyping. So, I want to quickly prototype um, a white box, a action adventure level. So, I'm going to choose and create quickly using Adobe Fuse, which comes with CC. Uh, quickly create a female character. Okay, so let's just choose a head. Let's go for fit A. Okay, so it's still got the same um, tools as uh, controls as Maya or any of your average 3D packages. So there's a head, so female fit A. So uh, let's have a quick look. Uh, let's just go for the so basically I'm just going to go for the average character, um, let's keep going, okay, um, and I should point out you can customise all these options, I am just going for the most basic, so the fun part is obviously customising all the options, but I'm just quickly showing you how to um, how to do it. So I've just clicked on customise and we can kind of fiddle about with the model, but uh, I'm not going to, so you can come, you can create some quite elaborate and insane uh, options. So let's, uh, that's fine, so that'll do for a character. Uh, so we are going to add some clothing, so uh, let's just have a quick look. I haven't really been through this in a while, I seem to have updated it. Let's have a relaxed T. Or should we go for something a bit cooler? Okay, so I'm just going to go through all of these options here. Obviously not the beards and the uh, masks, um, but I shall come back in a moment. Just a quick note that uh, you can go to the texture as long as you've got something selected. Um, and we can see here that we've got something called uh, the main fabric is bed sheet. So we can go in and we can adjust that colour. Uh, take that up a bit. Okay. Rings a bell. Okay, so uh, that's just to show you that you can adjust all these values, creases, where, but I think we're going for a, a quite a low poly look. I may need to adjust these hems. Okay, uh, so just to quickly show you that you can adjust the colour of the of the clothing. Okay, so uh, I have created a uh, character here. Um, let's call this looks like an action adventurer. Let's call her Laura Craft. Um, okay, so I'm amusing myself. So let's just export. Uh, actually, let's animate with Mixamo. Uh, okay, this is not happening. Let's not go directly to Mixamo. Um, so what I'll do is I will export the model as an OBJ. Uh, yes, yes, pack test is new Vs, yes. Okay, okay. So the good thing about an OBJ is that um, you can it'll bring the text page out separately uh, usually. Um, so that means that we can bring it into Unity a lot easy more easily because then we can just drag the textures onto the model that has the UV coordinates already mapped. So anyway, let's do this. So this is all super quick. Obviously, this will take a long time to model. Um, I don't want to model this uh, this high poly but for the purposes of this exercise it's all good let's do it okay i'll just save it out and then we'll go to the next package okay so um so it's exported uh, the obj with all the texture files uh, we don't really need all of these for a prototype but this is the state of play at the moment in game development that when you spit something out of a package it comes out with 78 texture files um so, we used to have to build these things, it used to be quite a pain. So, basically, uh, if you just try and drag these, someone, I want to upload a character. I'll calm down a bit. I want to upload a character. Um, and so, if I just drag in the 
OBJ and the textures, uh, it gets confused. So the weird thing that you have to do is you get all of these files um, and you uh, archive them. And it needs to be a zip. So I've previously done this to test it. So we've got the zip now. So what I'm going to do is I shall just drag that zip into there uh, and I shall come back in uno momento. Okay, so that's all come in fine. So what we need to do now is we need to... So the point of this entire exercise is to get it rigged. Um, and luckily, because it's come out of Fuse, it's in a perfect depose. So let's just get the chin sorted. Wrists, yeah. Elbows. I never know whether I'm supposed to put it down there or in the middle. I'm going to go middle. Uh, knees. Nobly, yes, groin, yep. Um, and so let's just leave that to auto rig. And so the purpose of this is that the skeleton that comes out of the Mixamo auto rigger is Unity friendly. So um, it's the it comes in as a standard Unity skeleton, which means that it's very convenient for replacing um, for replacing the existing um, animation system third person characters within unity so this really is a really quick okay not fantastic but i shall try this again sometimes this happens i found when uh, if you haven't if one of the markers isn't connected to the um actually over the mesh so let's just have another go everything looks fine i'll just keep doing this until it works Okay, so that time it's worked simply by adjusting the groin position uh, as if any action adventure would have a bob. Right, so um, so if we go next, uh, yep, yeah, that's fine. So what I was going to say is that this is really useful if you've created your own character, which I'll probably do in, a, in another tutorial, um, for getting a skeleton into it, because um, rigging, you do now have auto-rigging tools in Maya, which are pretty self-explanatory, that also spit out a, um, a Unity-friendly rig, um, but this effectively takes two minutes, that probably takes an hour, well, actually, probably takes... 10 minutes. Uh, right, so I shall shut up and what I'm just going to make sure is that we uh, we have the T-Pose character uh, so that when we download this character it will definitely be in the T-Pose. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to output a FPX. Um, so the problem whenever you get the whenever you take files that are mixing more into Unity is invariably that they'll lose their textures. So I can't remember whether I exported a collada previously, but I shall try with an FBX and I shall see what happens. Okay, so it is uh, it is better to export as a collada. So if you this is the it exports a collada as a zip. So it's, I've just um, Unpack that zip so we've got a textures folder which is perfect, that's just what we need. So, uh, here's the trick. So, uh, actually, let me just make a asset and let's call it folder and let's call it Andy and then let's call that. Oh, not coming to data, silly man. Uh, create folder characters. Okay, uh, so what I'm going to do is, uh, so I'm going to bring the textures folder in first, um, and there's method in my madness, because if you bring that in now, then it's got textures. So if you export from, um, if basically if you export Using FBX or FBX for Unity, it just does all kinds of weird things. I don't know why these haven't been updated because you get, uh, if you use FBX for Unity, your character comes in with its normals back to front. So don't do that, is my tip. Uh, so let's just see. So this, uh, the only downside here seems to be that this character is the size of the universe, but still it has come in back to front. Okay, beautiful. 
Okay, so here we are in Unity with the inside out LoRa model. Um, so there's probably an easy way of fixing this, but the way that I have fixed it is to just make a new material. Um, so I'm not bothered about all the normals, etc. So I, I'm just going to drag that into the albedo, uh, turn the smoothness down, and I need to apply this to the model in the scene so you can't actually apply it to uh, you can't it won't apply it to the whole model at once unfortunately you have to keep dragging it onto each element it seems to have come in in several separate components uh, so let's just have a look at the So the eyelashes uh, is notorious that when you bring the eyelashes out of fuse, uh, they come in solid. This is because I haven't put on the opacity map. Um, but for the purposes of the prototype and seeing as we're going to be looking at her back most of the time, I think I have corrected that. Um, okay.